Hello, thank you for tuning in for another exciting episode of Community Views, Community Voices. My name is Trisha Creason Valencia and I'm your host today. Today I'll be talking with Jim Gardner from Good Karma Bikes. Hi Jim, thank you for coming. Hi Trisha, thanks for having me. So um, can you start by just telling us a little bit about the evolution of Good Karma Bikes, how it started and where you are today in such a short time? Good Karma Bikes will be four years old in November. I started wrenching bikes in St. James Park. It took me about two weeks to realize it's not about bikes. I saw my client volunteer self-esteem transform. Mm -hmm. We were in a van the next year, and now we're in an 8,600 square foot full service bike shop. Wow, so you actually have a physical location now. What happens at that bike shop? Um, we're a full service shop Tuesday through Friday during the week. Um, we're at 345 Sinol Street in Midtown San Jose. We are employing people in homeless or jobless recovery. Uh, so the money that we make in that shop is reinvested into our programs to pay these people. So the staff are in homeless recovery. Can you tell me what that means? Um, many of our employees right now um, are living in temporary housing. They have case management. They're in their programs if they need them. And then they work for us 20 hours a week. Um, they're required to make seven job applications per week. And I imagine this is a really good job reference for them. Yes, indeed. We function as a job reference for them. We answer the phone from a prospective employee. The whole concept here is to mitigate the risk for a prospective employee to mm -hmm. hire somebody who's been homeless or jobless for a long time. Mm -hmm. And who are the customers that bring their bikes into the shop? Oh my goodness, we have been blessed by so many people from as far away as Contra Costa County, Marin County, um, um, Novato. People come in, have their bikes repaired. Um, they also donate their, their old bicycles. They buy new ones, give them to us. Mm -hmm. Again, um, our guys in the shop rehabilitate them and then we sell them. Oh, that's great. Um, Tell me a little bit about transportation for transformation. I know that's a catchphrase at your organization. What does that mean? Yeah, that's our, our signature program. Uh, transportation for transformation is employing people in homeless or jobless recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're people who love bicycles, and you're obviously interested into the sort of mechanical bike repair piece, but this is really a program about job development and personal growth, and then this amazing outcome of actually providing bikes to our community. Yes. What's the benefit of having bikes in our community? Why should, why should folks support that idea? Well, many people just cannot and are unable to, avoid autom uh, to afford automobile transportation. Mm -hmm. Just isn't gonna happen. Low wage workers, $10 mm -hmm. an hour, you can't afford a car. VTA doesn't always go every place you want it to. VTA is wonderful, but it doesn't go everywhere right. you want it to do. The buses are stopping further apart. You have to get from the stop to where you work or live. So a lot of people are utilizing bicycle transportation. Sure. And now everybody knows kids love bikes, right? We all Indeed. rode them when we were kids. Indeed. You have a kids program that's specifically about helping low-income kids get access to bikes, but it involves kids who are the volunteers. Yes. Tell Good Karma that. Kids actually affords an opportunity for youth to experience uh, a philanthropic way of life. So there are three parts. First part is that they ask their friends for bicycles that have been outgrown, mm -hmm. fully tax deductible. Second part, they volunteer rehabilitating those bikes. Third part, they grant the bicycles to peers in need. For example, at single parent shelters, charter schools, various places like that. So the youth experience ask, volunteer, grant, and it's been tremendous success so far. That's great. And that program is going to be expanding hopefully in the fall. In the fall when school starts up. Yes, we're already starting to get And gear kids up from the that. community can volunteer to participate in the program. Yes, they can. That's fantastic. Yeah. Do you have any stories of uh, a success story of a person who worked with you at the shop or a kid who was granted a bike? Can you tell us a little bit of something that's personal? Oh gosh, which one? <laughs> I know, so many, right? <laughs> yeah, um, I recently just had um, a lady contact me via email. She clicked in through the website. She teaches reading and she had a, a client who is severely dyslexic. Severely dyslexic. Well, she went to the library learning to read. Her bicycle was stolen, so she lives in Contra Costa County. They drove all the way down to get a free bike from us. Wow. So that she can continue her reading studies and work at her job. That's a great story. That my daughter, my daughter is dyslexic, so that really speaks to my heart. That's, yes, that's lovely. You, you know what I noticed, Tricia, is that a lot of my client volunteers and people are highly kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. they, they do have learning disabilities, yeah. but yeah. 
they can see with their hands. Yeah. They're highly kinesthetic, very adept mechanics. Yeah. And this gives them the opportunity to, to be gifted and to use their gifts and to Absolutely. serve the community and all at the same celebrated time. celebrated in our shop for their abilities, yes. That is so fantastic. Thanks. All right, well, if you'd like more information about Good Karma Bikes, you can check the information on our screen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Community Views, Community Voices, and we'll see you next time.